It's Friday, and you know what that means. So up here in Canada, it's actually a long weekend. Monday is Thanksgiving, so I'm going to be heading up to the uh, my parents who are in the eastern townships. Nice and just in the middle of the woods. Nice to relax, disconnect for a few days. You didn't come to listen about my weekend plans. You came here to learn something fun. In case you're new here, my name is Kevin and here on my channel on Fridays we do a 5 minute Friday so we try and learn something really fast, pretty much front end related. And in this week's video it's something that I get asked a lot about in the comments. Um, and it's for something I use in a lot of my videos but I get questions about it so I thought it'd be worth making a video dedicated to it and a 5 minute Friday seemed like the perfect thing to do. I, I use placeholder images all the time and when you're doing code pens and just trying to do quick things as you're learning new stuff, you don't want to be going to actually have to find images to use, so placeholder images are the way to go, and I use Onsplash it to do it. If you're already using Onsplash or you think you already know everything about it, there's some cool extra stuff that you can do with it. It's not just a placeholder, you can sort of have modifiers on that as well, so in this video we're going to be checking that out. So let's hit that timer and here we go. Okay, so first off, Onsplash.com is a wonderful site that is for stock photographies, but it's high resolution, amazing photography that you can use for free and personal and commercial work. Honestly, it's really awesome. I've loved the site for a long time. I've been using their images for a long time. Um, and as an added bonus, they've made it insanely easy to use their wonderful images as placeholders. And a lot of these images make for just really pretty placeholders, so it's great. So if we come over here, um, now their site is onsplash.com, but if we do our image and I do my SRC, instead of onsplash.com, I want it to go to onsplash.it. And then I put in a width and I want to put in a height. And that's all I need to do. So here, let's just switch that for a 600 by 400, and I'll get an image coming in there at 600 by 400. If I change this number to 300, the image will change to a random image from their site that is right there. Uh, another cool thing is if you need a square, you can just put one number instead of both, and it will give you a square with those dimensions. Um, now one thing is it is randomly generated so next time it might be a different image so you could even come back to the same page you had before and some of the images might be different. Um, but there's other things that you can do that are also really cool with this and this is things I think people don't realize. So uh, while this is uh, like this, let's just go back to 600 by 400. And um, if before them I put a G, whoops, G and then another slash, it's going to give me uh, the image, a grayscale image. Now you can see it's not the same image I had before. So if you're really banking on a specific image, uh, right now this isn't exactly going to do it, but we'll see how we can do that in a second. But the G will give you a grayscale image. And if I take that off, it'll go back to color images. Um, and we can also blur images. Now this is one thing I always mess up. I always try putting my blur in the front, but if you come over here and then you do question mark blur, it will give you a blurry image. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, it's going to take one of their images randomly that fits the dimensions you want, and it will just make it relatively blurry. So this could be really nice if you need a background that is a placeholder. Um, now, I'm going to come back to here, and I'm actually going to type in on Splash It. And you'll see here it comes to Pixum. So it's this is all being powered by Pixum here, Pixum.photos. I personally keep forgetting Pixum. I find on Splash It a lot easier to remember, maybe because I go to onsplash.com all the time anyway. So you can see if you forget any of these things, like the, uh, maybe not so much this, but if you forget how to do the grayscale, you can just type in onsplash it or just go to pixim.photos. Uh, it brings you to the same place. You can see how to do the grayscale. Um, you can also get a whole list for your images, which is really cool. Uh, if you need this for like any certain purposes, it gives you all the information for it. So uh, if you're doing some stuff in a database or something like that, this could be come in handy. If you need a specific image, I mentioned before, they're random. If you need a specific image, you can get the full list here. And let's just grab, uh, open this up in a new tab. So uh, you get the full list of images. Uh, it's going to take a second to load. The timer's going. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Uh, so you can see I have my walrus here. So I'm going to come back to here and uh, I'm going to put in, let's just paste in that. So I have my 200 by 300, but my image number here, I want 1084. So I can come onto here and put 1084. 
So now instead of having an image, uh, you know, that you wanted or that was not one you wanted, you can come in here and actually pick one. So I really like this jellyfish. So that's 1069. So I can come onto here and just do a 1069 and I can get that image of my jellyfish. And if I want to play around with the dimensions of it, I'm always going to have that picture of a jellyfish, no matter how big I need that image to be. Um, it's always going to be that same picture. So that can be really handy if you don't want it randomly jumping to other pictures every time somebody goes onto the site. You can have it, you know, choose, you can have it, you can choose the specific image you want. So at least if you're showing it to a client as a quick placeholder, every time they go there, the image doesn't change. Or if it's a background image and you need a specific color, you can have it set to the, you know, find an image that you like and just stick to the color that you need. And there we have it. Um, I just, I really love on splash. So not only as placeholder images, I just like their images for other stuff too. I'm always downloading them and using them for tons of different things. Um, even in my thumbnails, sometimes it's sort of like a blurred out background type thing just to give a bit of texture. Really cool resource. So, uh, and just for placeholders, when you're doing quick mock-ups or playing around with stuff, they are perfect. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, hit the thumbs up. If you haven't yet subscribed, please consider subscribing. And until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome. And of course, have a great weekend.